I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. I think it's fair to say most of us have seen those Goggins motivational videos by now. And I did 67,000 pull-ups <laughs> in trying to break this record. When I see somebody who's such an anomaly like David Goggins is, it always makes me wonder whether they're built differently than I am and than we are, or whether they've just kind of trained themselves to be like that. And that's what I want to explore in this video. Does David Goggins have a different brain that makes him be able to do all of these crazy feats? And do we all have the components in our brain to do that? Or is he in some way unique? So I'm Jack, I'm a doctor in the UK and I share videos looking through scientific literature to try and find some gems that we can apply to our everyday lives to help us to build healthy habits and to live happier lives. So if that's the kind of thing you'd like to see, then subscribe. So let's get into this. If I keep on thinking too, there's always someone out there working harder than you. And to build self-respect, self-esteem, self-discipline, all those things. What makes Goggins so unique is the fact that he always seems to take the path of most resistance. And I chose the path of most resistance. Talent not required. So I wanted to look into the scientific literature around willpower and tenacity. Like, what is it about this guy that makes him be able to make these difficult decisions and always be able to push through really, really difficult situations? Because if we can learn how to do that better, then that's so beneficial for all of us in all of the difficult situations that we are faced with. When I looked through the research, all of the literature seemed to point to one structure in the brain, which is convenient for this video because it makes it easier to explain. So that is the anterior mid-cingulate cortex. So what is it? It's active when we do difficult tasks or when we refrain from doing those tempting but counterproductive tasks. It's like the director of operations for our brains. It's doing basically like cost-benefit computations, helping us make decisions on where we direct our energy, both within our brains and within our bodies. What's just absolutely insane about this is that when I was looking through all of these papers, it seems that it increases in both size and activity when we do things that we don't want to do. And when we refrain from doing those impulses of things we really want to do, but we shouldn't. So the more friction we have in the task, the more active this this structure seems to be. And why is that so important? And why have I decided to make this whole video on this? Why is that such a big deal? We all kind of know that when we do difficult things, it kind of is makes us feel good. Like when you go for a run and at the end of the run, obviously during you push through all of that pain, at the end you always seem to feel good. And then it kind of makes you, once you've done that thing, it makes you, oh, I'll just clean the flat because I like, you know, it'll feel good when I've finished it. It kind of generalizes into other tasks. And what we have now is a structure within our brain where we can go, oh, the reason why it generalizes might be that it's one common structure that governs willpower in these infinite number of situations that we have in front of us. And I found that quite cool. I know I'm a bit of a nerd, so maybe this scientific discovery for me is not as interesting to you, but I found that really cool. I really like the the idea that, you know, pushing through really hard in this workout could also benefit me in the future in my relationship or in my work. You have to be willing to outwork everybody in the world. Going back to Goggins, right? Do we think that his brain is different to ours? Well, in some ways, maybe he wasn't born different, but through all of the decisions that he's chosen to make throughout his life, his brain probably looks completely different to mine now. And that's because his anterior mid cingulate cortex is probably much bigger because he's used it much more because he's pushed through all of these difficult decisions and situations through being a Navy SEAL, through doing all these ultra marathons, through doing thousands of pull-ups a day. So his brain probably does look completely different to mine now. That's just my theory anyway, it's not proven. But 
what do you, what can you take away from this? So I always want to leave you with a habit or just some food for thought on how this could impact your life. And I guess, how could you choose to push yourself out of your comfort zone tomorrow that might help you generalize into other decisions in your life and other situations? And I just wanted to leave you with that as a food for thought. And if you've got any ideas of how you're planning to, you know, push yourself out of your comfort zone and increase the activity in your anterior mid cingulate cortex, then please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you found this useful and you like the idea of learning about science that could help you build healthier and happier lives, then please subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Thank you.